What's going on, guys? Welcome to another Midwest Tokusatsu news coverage. This week, we've got news from all the big four, mostly Power Rangers this week, a little bit of Kamen Rider, a little less Sentai, and then some interesting stuff regarding Ultraman. So, let's get into it. So, first, we have rumors regarding the potential cast for Dino Fury. And before I start, let me put out a disclaimer real quick, because once again, this source comes from the Illuminati. And I know some people don't really find them all that credible, even though they've broken news that's turned out to be true in the past. So I think they're pretty credible when it comes to that. But at this point in time, this is only rumor. And I think enough people in the fandom are talking about it to where it justifies the discussion. So it's at least worth talking about. So this comes from the recent video. And right now we only have five people announced so, I mean, it's obviously the, the core five. No colors confirmed. And their names are Russell Curry, Hunter Denno, Cal Moya, Alexandria Nunez, and Chance Perez. So, right off the bat, you'll notice that there are two females in the group. While, while we know you Soldier only had one female in the core five. So, obviously, one of them, most likely, everyone's speculating green... So we're speculating that Green might be the one to be gender swapped, and this has not happened in literal years. At least I think not since Wild Force when Taylor was yellow. So that would be interesting to see if that's the route they go. I mean, other than that, there's really not much else to go off of when it comes to this reveal, because at this point, it's just names and faces. And it does state that these actors do have experience in acting in small TV and web projects. So... I mean, they have credentials, and that, that's good, but... And so far, we have no idea what the plot of the show is, what the general tone's gonna be, how their acting is. Like, that's the stuff that I wanna see, because that's going to determine whether or not this season does well, and if it's good, and if it's of quality, and worth watching. But we will know in due time. So our next bit of news comes from the official Power Rangers page, and this is an update on the Lightning Collection Dino Thunder White figure. Well, this is an official announcement from them, but as we all know, though there was a factory error regarding the black trim around his visor, and when you see in the press photos, he just looks all kinds of off without it. So, they addressed this in a statement, and it reads, Draggle Power, White Ranger, the Dino Thunder White Ranger is now available exclusively at Walgreens. We apologize for the deco issue on the visor, and we're making it right. So please head to consumercare.hasbro.com for information on how to receive a replacement helmet for free. Order now. So you can order it from Walgreens, and to order a replacement helmet, you can contact the customer service on their consumer care website. I'll put the link in the description for that. So at first, I was kind of actually a little apprehensive towards buying this one because of that. And I was worried that uh, they were kind of skipping out on quality control. But now seeing this, all of those worries are set aside now and I can buy them comfortably. So continuing with the Lightning Collection, we have a couple of leaks, apparently, from No Pink Spandex. Well, they have their sources too, because their source, uh, they don't mention it here. But from them, we have some leaks. And first up, I see we have... A listing for what could potentially be a two-pack for SPD where we have a B squad ranger and an A squad ranger so that sounds intriguing because we already know we have red and then we know the the A squad their helmets are repaints of the in space helmets so going off that logic knowing that we just got in space yellow as our first official lightning space figure that could lead the way to I don't know be a squad yellow, B squad yellow. So that sounds plausible in the least. Or it could very well be A squad red, B squad red, because going off of this next leak, we have a listing for a Lightning Collection 2-pack for Andros and Astronomer. So this right here, I'm really excited to see, because this is how you do a 2-pack. You take two crucial characters from the same season, say a ranger and a villain like this one, and you put them together like this. So two packs don't have to be a bad thing because when a two pack re-releases a figure with a new character, that's what kind of makes some fans a little dismayed at their decision making. But here, two new figures, two crucial characters, and this is totally going to be worth the 40 bucks that they're charging for it because, I mean, I'll pre-order it day one. 
Now, what I'm curious to know is which uh, hairstyle for astronomer they're going to go with, because I feel like her purple wig is her most defining one. I mean, there's a, there's a couple of other ones like, you know, the black wig, the white wig and the, you know, the uh, the red cut, the uh, red bowl cut wig, which looked a little funny. But I think purple astronomer is definitive astronomer. But who knows? Maybe they'll give us options. I mean, it is 40 bucks, right? So why not make it worth it? So our next set of figures, we have MMPR Green for the first time. So we already got him technically in that Dino Thunder Fighting Spirit 2-pack. But this is, you know, the regular version without the silver stripes on the helmet. And then a re-release for what looks like the White Ranger. And a Z-Putty and Dino Thunder Red, which we already kind of got a leaked image of right here. And... It looks like they painted the trim on his visor silver as opposed to white, but it doesn't look terrible. I mean, at least, like, the detail is there, unlike, you know, Dino Thunder White. So, not uh, not the most accurate, but not bad either. And then someone else also pointed out that he's missing that gold trim around his neck. But once again, like, it's not that crucial of a detail, and it doesn't ruin the figure in any way at all. And then when it comes to MMPR White, some people have speculated that it might be the Equation White Ranger, Delphine. But if this ends up being, you know, regular MMPR White, I wouldn't mind that because it's not making you buy it in a two-pack with a new character. So, so you're not forced to rebuy it if you don't want to. And then as for the Z-Putty, if you're into army building, then there you go. And then this last announcement is actually really interesting because now apparently... They're dabbling into Monster of the Week figures. And these two we have here are King Sphinx and Pumpkin Rapper, funnily enough. And they're going to be listed at $29.99 each, so $30 bucks roughly. And they'll be released January of 2021. So I think that this is a genius next step for the Lightning Collection because obviously they want to continue doing MMPR. And if they run out of Rangers, they could keep with this and release monsters, you know, like Pudgy Pig. Uh, let's see what else we got. Dark Warrior and maybe uh, maybe even Cyclops is like I would love to see Cyclops is actually. But uh, with them, you know, re-releasing Rangers and doing this like this is just like a great way for them to continue the line and to make sure they keep like that brand recognition up and running. So moving on to our Common Rider news. Last week, Common Rider O's celebrated its 10th anniversary and. There's this announcement from the Tokusatsu News Network, written by Joshua Sosito, if I'm pronouncing that right. The article is titled, Toei Celebrates Kamen Rider Oz's 10th Anniversary, and it reads, Toei has made an initial announcement about the celebration of the 10th anniversary of Kamen Rider Oz, beginning with free distribution of the full series on Toei's Japanese YouTube channel, starting on uh, September 5th, all 48 region-locked episodes... Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Okay, all 48 region-locked episodes of the series will be made available at once, timing out at about 20 straight hours of content. Additionally, video messages from Shu Watanabe, Eji Hino, Yosuke Miura, Ankh, and Riho Takata, Hina Izumi, will be shown with other videos to come. Over on Twitter, a hashtag campaign will be held on the official Common Rider Twitter account to advertise new Common Rider O's merchandise that will be announced. Common Rider O's, which first aired in the fall of 2010, follows Edgy Hino, a young man with no worries aside from having a clean pair of boxers for tomorrow. After being recruited, well, you guys know the story, so I'm not going to keep going. But anyway, that's a neat little tribute to the show, though. Like, I myself have yet to complete O's. It's like someday, someday soon, I will watch O's, like I promise you. But I know the gist of it, though. So moving on from that, next, I wanted to give my thoughts on the first episode of Saber because, as we know, it aired last week. And so far, like a lot of the reactions that I've seen are very lukewarm or very meh because I think that it was just okay for our first episode because it wasn't anything too mind-blowing it was just very by the books wink and i don't know like it just had a lot to do in one episode introducing us to new characters the power sets how things kind of work in this world toma himself is a fine protagonist 
but his his friend may he kind of reminds me of uh Akiko from from double being like how loud and, and obnoxious she is throughout the entire episode so I don't know like maybe that could be a versus battle between those two characters to see who's more annoying Akiko or or may and then blades we didn't get too much on him I don't know the uh, ca- I forgot the character's name but you know common Rider blades oh boy that's gonna be a tongue twister with Blade and Blades. I, I don't even want to get into that right now. There's not much to go off of with him right now. But apparently he's from uh, he's from the same world as the original Saber. And he's already a writer himself, it looks like. He already seems to be in the know of most of what's going on. But we'll have to see where this goes in the next episode. Because like this is just getting started. And like, they've like, yet to introduce us to everyone now. And we can't judge a series based off of one episode, so give it time to see if it actually goes anywhere. Other than that, that's really all I have for Common Rider. So moving on to this small tidbit of Sentai news. This is from the Jello Zone on Facebook. And they have a link to the Bandai Candy website. And this is an announcement for the Super Mini Pla Bio Robo from Chodenshi Bio Man. So for anyone that's into, you know, the uh, mini plot builds, this one's for you. And if you like Bioman or just like building these things in general, this one's, I mean, these aren't really for me, but I understand the appeal to them. So this is probably great for any huge Bioman fans out there. So last but certainly not least, we have some Ultraman news. And first up, this comes from UTSC.Weebly.com, and this is for... Ultraman Z second ending theme announced. Oh, I mean, I kind of like the first one. I mean, maybe it's better, but I like the first ending theme just as it is. So, I mean, doesn't need a new one? Technically not, but I guess these kind of shows do this. So it reads, Subaraya announced that the second half of Ultraman Z will have a new ending theme performed by Tasuku Hatanaka, the voice of Ultraman Z in said series. Okay. Titled Promise for the Future, the song will be first heard starting with the episode that will air on September 26th. In addition, the song also serves as the actor's sixth single. Said single is set for a November 26th release and will be available in both regular and limited editions. With the limited edition including a Blu-ray that is the song's music video and making of feature. So once again, I like the first ending theme. I mean, the second one's not going to hurt anything. So long as they don't change the opening theme, because that opening is just way too fire for them to change anything about that. So please leave that one alone. So our last bit of news is a release for issue one of The Rise of Ultraman from Marvel Comics. And as we know, it's written by Kyle Higgins of Boom Studios Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fame. And I've read the first issue so far. It's really awesome. Like Expect a review for that in the upcoming weeks. I'm not sure quite when it'll be, but just whenever I can like make time to get it out there. I can say there's not much in the way of Ultraman this issue because it's just introducing you to the characters. It kind of centers around this new female recruit to the Science Patrol and it reintroduces you to Shin Hayata because apparently he's been fired, but we'll talk more about that in the next video. But it's got the main story, a couple of like little side joke stories with Pigmon from Ultra Q and then an actual Ultra Q story towards the end, which I didn't even know would be in there. So like that was nice to see that Kyle Higgins and like the rest of this production crew has like done their research on this franchise to do right by it. So I'm excited to review it. I hope you guys are too. So look out for that review. And aside from that, that's really all I have for this week. So be sure as always to like, comment and subscribe. Be sure to like my Facebook page on Midwest Tokusatsu. We are also on Instagram and Twitter and Patreon. And this is your captain, signing out.